Hello, we're Book Sell It. I'm Arion. Prometheus. We have a book tag. We were tagged by, <clears throat> excuse me, Reading Ideas and Genre Books. And the creators are To Readers It May Concern and At Prose and Petticoats. And I just need to make an apology to both uh, of the creators because the last tag that we did, I for some reason thought that they were, that they mostly read like sci-fi and fantasy? I don't know who I was looking up. Let me just apologize because I have since watched their videos, subscribed to their videos, and they are both lovely people. So if you haven't checked them out, you need to go check them out. And I will leave everybody's information in the description box. Ready? Okay, so the name of this tag is Counting the Days Tag. And the first prompt what is a book that excites you because of its cover? I don't know if excites is the exact word for the book that I've chosen. Go. What's yours? <laughs> Richard Rhodes, Dark Sun, The Making of the Hydrogen Bomb. Oh, interesting. Because, you know, why stop at the atom? Fascinating. I just will go. Might as well kick it up a notch or ten. <laughs> okay. Um, did you know? Did you pull that based on mine? Yeah, it was the best one. Okay, that's fascinating. So, mine, in my defense, I picked my books first. She did. <laughs> okay, so I chose Nuclear War by Annie Jacobson. And the reason why I chose this is because of the science behind it and the awe of it, but also in the awe of how scary it is. I'm really looking forward to this book. This, mo this book might jump the TBR line. It might. Are you ready? Yep. Number two. What is a book that excites you because of its author? Okay, so I chose The Great Bridge, the epic story of the building of the Brooklyn Bridge by David McCullough because of the engineering, the architecture of it. It is a beautiful bridge. It really is. Especially for that time period, I think, is just... The engineering and the architecture of it is phenomenal. So I chose this one. What did you choose? Controlled thermonuclear reactions because... I'm seeing a theme here. Of its author, Samuel Glassstone. I believe it's Samuel S. Glassstone. Who's that? Consultant to the United States Atomic Energy Commission. In the 1950s, if you're looking up papers on atomic stuff, you can usually find his name somewhere in it. Wait, Accredited to it. What's his name? Samuel S. Glassstone, if I'm not mistaken. I wonder if he's in any of... Annie Jacobson's books, because I don't know this. I don't know. Whew, that has the old library smell to it, it doesn't is, it? It is in isolation on my bookshelf because of it, yeah. Yeah, okay. I cannot move those three books. There are three books, one on either side of it. And... I wonder if you put, like, a dryer sheet near them or something, if that would help. We don't have any dryer sheets, but, I mean, we could buy some. Okay. What is a book that excites you because of its premise? Want me to go first? Yes. Okay, American Theocracy. I like this cover. It's very fascinating. The Peril and Politics of Radical Religion, Oil, and Borrowed Money in the 21st Century by Kevin Phillips. You know, a little light reading for the premise. Yeah. The, the premise of being nonfiction. The premise of our world. What did you choose? Prisoner of the State, the Secret Journal of Chinese Premier Zhao Ziyang. He was the premier in charge during the Tiananmen Square incident. Mm. And it talks about his attempts to engage in, I guess the best version I could think of is Chinese glasnost. What's that? Glasnost was a Gorbachev 
thing, openness. He was trying to open up China from the hard communist, oh, okay. hard Behind line. the Iron Curtain. Yeah, he, it was the 1980s. The country had just gotten rid of Mao. Most of the, Mao's original cabinet was dying at this point. Mm -hmm. China was suffering economically, and so he was starting to open it up to more capitalistic things. I think the special economic zones were started under him. And then the students started to protest because they thought they could get away with it. Mm. Chinese hardliners got involved. Several issues happened, and he got ousted. At least that's what seems to have happened. But wow. How many pages is that? Just it is mostly. stupidly small. It's less than 300, including the notes. That's awesome. It's Read just, it. It's just so dense. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, there is that. Okay, what is a book that excites you because of its style? Yeah, okay, apparently I'm going first. I chose this book that I've had for a very long time, and it is the, it is My Dearest Friend, Letters of Abigail and John Adams, and obviously it is epistolary because it's the letters that they wrote between each other, and can we just look at that beautiful, I mean, even the front, it's just beautiful. Anyway, so yeah, it should be an easy read because it's just letters. Just letters. Okay, so I completely forgot about this one. Oh no! Do you want to pause it? Are we on premise? Which style. Were we, on, we were on style, yes. We were on style. Prometheus right. had to go get a book. Inside the Third Reich, a memoir by Albert Spears. Okay, what is it that you like or are excited about that? It's a high-ranking Nazi writing about high-ranking Nazis. Okay. He would know the insides, for sure. Precisely. So it's going to be interesting to see how exactly he writes it. Because mm. if I remember correctly, he wrote this while he was in prison from the Nuremberg trials. Okay. He served 12 years or 15 years. Oh, wow. And he's the one who built what, at the time, was the air ministry for Göring, which is currently now the finance ministry in Germany, if I remember correctly. And he's an architect by trade. Just very interesting. Mm. The... Um, he partially was responsible for the development of the Atlantic Wall, which would have been the defenses faced on Normandy. Although there's also some statements that most of the individual stuff was developed by Jewish architects and engineers who were in the camps. I was going to say, I thought that they... So, did, were they just the workers or were they actually the engineers? Some of them were actual engineers designing the stuff and doing the math for it. Wow. Now I know, so the book that I'm currently reading, sorry, side note, squirrel, the book that I'm currently reading right now is talking about how certain bombs were purposely made to be duds. Ah, yes, the time delay, because people would come out and start looking around for the rebels and disposing of them. Well, not, no, from the, the Jews that were in the factories and being forced to make oh. these bombs for the, for the Nazis, they were purposely making them duds. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, number five. What is a book that excites you because of its influence? Excite, it might not be the right terminology. For, it's style. Yeah. It's a style of writing. Um, well, this, it all, it all this, is, this is the influence. So first in Afghanistan, an insider's account of how the CIA spearheaded the war on terror in Afghanistan, it's by Gary C. Schroen, I believe is how you say his name, and the reason why I chose this is because the information that is fed to the public is nuanced to influence you to think a certain way. And I will just leave it at that. Ernst Jünger, A Storm of Steel. It's a very interesting cover. Yeah. Which I've heard is the partial antithesis to All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh. It's designed to see World War I as more noble than potentially All Quiet on the Western Front. Interesting. Which definitely... Another viewpoint. Another viewpoint of the war. Okay. One that definitely... I can't say definitely. <laughs> one that sees... Possibly. One that sees more positive notes in it than All Quiet on the Western Front did. Oh, that's right, because we were talking about that because of the, of the brotherhood, the relationships that the men bond together, etc. Yeah, at least that's what I've heard. Yeah. 
All right, so I don't know why you haven't been reading. Well, you know, math has been taking up all of your time, right? And hacking foliage, because, yeah. Let me just say my arm hurts. <laughs> Whack with the machete. <laughs> you okay? What? I'm tearing up. Oh, okay. What is a book that excites you because of its emotional weight? You go first this time. I keep going first. All right. By Max Hastings, Vietnam, an epic tragedy, mm -hmm. 1945 to 1975. And this will include the French reoccupation, which will be interesting. Oh, wow. That did not go well. Heck, this actually would technically start when Vietnam wasn't even a thing. It was French Indochina. And then the breaking up in 54 of Laos, Cambodia, and mm. Vietnam. And I wonder if it'll mention about the South Vietnamese, because I've heard that there was contention about whether or not the South Vietnamese election to separate was actually rigged by the chairman, who was like Song Peng, I can't even remember the dude's name. If it's not Ho Chi Minh, which apparently Ho Chi Minh was an acronym, or an an anagram? Anonym? I have no idea. Pen name. It's a pen name. Oh, okay. Nom de plume? Yeah, it wasn't actually his name. It was... But did he write under that name? Because that would mean nom de plume. But I, if I, he was just... I think he wrote under Like that. an alias? Yeah, that's the word I was looking okay. for. Alias. Okay. So the book that I chose is The Holocaust, A New History by Lawrence Reese. Because obvious reasons. And... What is a book that excites you because of its sense of humor? Now, this one I struggled with because how do you know a book has a sense of humor unless you've already read it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I chose Lafayette by Harlow Giles Unger, and the reason why I chose this is because in his John Adams book, it was hilarious. He definitely has a sense of humor in his writing and made... The biography of John Quincy Adams extremely interesting and funny, and so I'm hoping that he does the same thing with this one. I went in the um, opposite direction. I've already read this book, but I know this author has a sense of humor because of it. John D. Clark's Ignition, an informal history of liquid rocket propellants. Did I read it too? You, I don't think you've read this. You just tabbed it? Yeah. <gasps> he tabbed a book. One tab. <laughs> yeah. As there are several parts in here that are hilarious involving the shenanigans that early rocketry, liquid rocketry oh, propellant. I remember you reading that and telling me about yeah, it. Yeah. The shenanigans that they would get up to. Um, horribly toxic chemicals. The experiments, the explosions, Explos the melting. Explosions were common. Melting was common. Sometimes these things were so horribly touchy that they would detonate randomly. And That's that was scary. not entirely a preclusion for their experimentation. Uh, some chemicals smelled like skunks. Others dead meat. Again, did not stop them. One was a fly attractant. Gross. Talking about the math involved in it and mentioning that the math, as a paraphrased quote, the math was not hard but very tedious. Mm. And there have been, I know colleagues who have been doing this for 20 years with no apparent side effects. Are they making any progress on the math? Thing? Yeah, they're, they're, they're just like writing out tables. Like you see the tables oh, yeah, that yeah. I show you? Mm -hmm. Somebody had to do the math equations for each one of those Excel spreadsheet dots and just write it uh, in. Do a bunch of integral equations, write them in, just keep doing that over and over again to make a table that you can use. This wrote. sounds very torturous. Yes, and they've been doing it for the last 20, 20 years. years. The same people? Yeah. Or are they getting new people in? Same, same dude doing it for 20 years. Wow. Just walk into work one day and start writing out tables and not go insane because of it. Okie dokie. And then our last... Prompt, what is a book that excites you because of its challenge or difficulty? This one was challenging and difficult to choose, just one book. But I ended up going with the Gulag Archipelago. So, Archipelago. Volume 1. We don't have... Are there three volumes? I don't know. I know there's a volume 2 and we don't have it. This is the only one that we have. 
and this is by Alexander hmm, Souls Heniston. I don't know if that's right. Soul Heniston, yeah. Okay. Heniston. An experiment in literary investigation. I have heard that this is a very challenging read because it's very barbarous, barbaric. So that's my final, my final pick. All right, I'm cheating. I'm using a book over. No, it. you're not allowed to cheat. I'm cheating. Cheater. Yes, I am. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Uh, control okay. thermonuclear reactions again, because I don't understand vector math for magnetic fields using gradient stuff in CGS units. Because again, I think this... Wait a minute, what, what was this? I was going to say, don't open the book. Don't open the book, what? it stinks. When was this published? 1960. This very well might predate the SI system units. Which I barely function with anyway. So this is why you have a lot of textbooks. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so our last prompt is to tag people. I will put their information down below. And thank you very much to Genre Books and Reading Ideas for tagging us. This was, this was a challenging one. And um, it was also fun. It was also fun. So thank you also to the creators. And if you... Um, actually have a channel and I haven't tagged you and I don't tag you and I don't know about you for some reason and you want to do this tag please help yourself okay please do it just mention who the creators are and have fun so thank you very much for joining us we hope you have a fantastic day we'll see you in the comments bye